Hello at magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Salamat po sa ating sa, salamat po sa mga nakadalo ngayong um, ngayong hapon po. Thank you for carving out time to join us in this very important forum updating us on the latest developments regarding COVID-19. Now, this event is a partnership among the UP Center for Integrative and Development Studies Health Systems Development Program and Decolonial Studies Program together with the UP Center for Women's and Gender Studies. Um, ang program po natin ngayon will be live tweeted in the UP SIDS, um, yung sa Center for Integrative and Development Studies po, Twitter page, um, which is at UP SIDS. I'll be, uh, we'll also be posting um, that Twitter profile um, in the chat box. Um, it will be live tweeted by the UP SIDS um, program on social and political change. So good afternoon po sa ating lahat. So as I said, like um, ang program na ito, aside from being on Zoom, um, will also be uh, live tweeted sa UP SIDS Twitter page and nasa YouTube po. Okay, so um, to welcome everyone, let me hand over um, to the director of the UP Center for Women's and Gender Studies, Dr. Natalie Africa Versetes. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Dr. Marby Villaseran. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. I hope we are all safe and doing well amidst the unrelenting COVID-19 pandemic. On behalf of the Program on Health Systems Development and the Decolonial Studies Program of the University of the Philippines Center for Integrative and Development Studies and the University of the Philippines Center for Women's and Gender Studies, thank you for being virtually here with us in this session entitled COVID-19 Sahangin, a webinar on the latest updates regarding the airborne COVID-19 virus. The COVID-19 pandemic is a global health crisis that is unparalleled in our lifetimes. And it continues to wreak extensive, devastating social and economic impacts, especially for individuals who belong to the most marginalized sectors. It has been highlighted that the pandemic has exacerbated pre-existing social and economic inequalities. On a personal level, the pandemic has reordered our lives dramatically, each of us in distinct ways, and there is still no certainty when it will end. Since the first lockdown in March 2020, we have been bombarded with both information and misinformation on the COVID-19 virus. Those of us who, were, who are very interested in understanding the virus in order to protect ourselves and our loved ones have devoured resources that are readily available through the internet. We have found contradictory assertions, erstwhile facts that were proven wrong and subsequently corrected, and the growing body of new knowledge on the virus, as well as on the vaccines developed to combat the virus. With respect to the airborne transmission of the severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 or SARS-CoV-2, a 2021 study by Tang et al. already dispelled myths such as aerosols or droplets with a diameter of five micrometers or less. All particles larger than five micrometers fall within one to two meters of the source. If it is short range, it cannot be airborne. And if it is airborne, surgical masks or cloth face coverings will not work. We have come a long way in understanding the virus, how it is transmitted, and how to protect ourselves from the first time it came into public consciousness in late 2019 and early 2020. We are so fortunate to have with us this afternoon Dr. Antonio Miguel Danz, a professor at the UP College of Medicine, who will provide us accurate updates on the airborne COVID-19 virus. In the context of a pandemic, Information is truly power, and we recognize that a widespread understanding of the COVID-19 virus is critical in order for us not to get sick, not to spread the virus, and thus protect others, and most important of all, in order for us to effectively defeat it. Until then, please get vaccinated, wear a mask, practice appropriate physical distancing, avoid crowds and areas with poor ventilation, Wash your hands frequently, 
cover coughs and sneezes, clean and disinfect surfaces, and monitor your health daily. I wish all of us a most enlightening afternoon. Maraming salamat at magandang hapon po ulit sa lahat. Thank you, Dr. Natsi. So before um, I introduce our speaker no, um, for this afternoon, mga last minute paalala lang po. So all questions related to the talk should be placed in the Q&A section. So, so Q&A box po natin siya ilalagay. Um, yung mga greetings can be written in the chat box, but only questions in the Q&A section will be um, asked later on in the Q&A section of our program. So um, let me just introduce you um, to our speaker this afternoon. So Do Dr. Antonio Miguel Danz um, is from the UP College of Medicine, Philippine General Hospital, and is also the convener of the Health Systems Development Program of the UP Center for Integrative and Development Studies. He has made significant contributions to the field of clinical epidemiology by bridging the schism between public health and clinical medicine, he, um, he also promotes scientific design, measurement, and evaluation in research by generating and applying evidence-based knowledge in the clinical care of the patient. His research interests are periodic health examination and um, patient empowerment, as well as evidence-based medicine. So um, without further ado, um, let's have Dr. Tony Dance. Thank you, Marby. And hello, good good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just a minute, my my camera decided to stop working. Uh, let me just check my connections. There. Can you see me now, Marty? Hindi pa din. Hindi pa rin po, Dr. Tony. It was working fine. Uh, let me just check the wires. That's okay lang po. Um, well, Dr. Tony oh, is... Yeah. Um, yeah. Ayan na po. Ayan na po siya. You um, can see that. Yes. Dr. Tony, ano lang po, paalala lang po dun sa participants natin to answer the Google form that's pasted in the, posted rather in the chat box. Yun lang po. Sige pa, Dr. Tony. Uh, do we have data on that already, Marby? So uh, yes, we do have that. Uh, we can project it. So now that you've met me and our hosts, um, by the way, I'd like to thank ano, SIDS and uh, for, for enabling this uh, lecture today. You know? So we, sino sino ba tayo today? Most of us, most of us are healthcare workers, uh, a good number of students and academics, uh, and people from the business sector and uh, communities are here as well. So good afternoon uh, to everyone. Um, okay, I, I'm going to share my screen now. So I, I'll talk this uh, afternoon about Airborne transmission. No? Uh, airborne is a difficult word to translate in Tagalog. And uh, let, let's see how well I do in translating it later. Uh, the talk is uh, uh, prepared by me and my wife, Dr. Leonila Dance, and through the Healthcare Professionals Alliance Against COVID-19. No? We're a uh, loose... Uh, alliance of uh, about 160 healthcare professional organizations involving doctors, nurses, midwives, pharmacists, medical technologists, and others. So I'll be talking about the evidence on airborne transmission uh, while trying to define what it is, uh, what the preventive measures are, and uh, how ventilation uh, is used to battle airborne transmission. So these are the three major modes of transmission of respiratory virus. No? Uh, so pwede ho siyang kumalat through droplets. So sinabi na ni uh, Natsi, no? uh, the larger particles, uh, 
na Tagalog, pilansik. No? Uh, and these particles no, uh, fall after one to two meters kasi malalaki sila. No? So yan yung, uh, when they land on surfaces, sa kamay or on tables, then we can, and we hold them, uh, we can transfer them to other people. Pag nag-hold hands, nagpalit ng cellphone or humawak sa lamesa, yun naman yung fomite transmission. And only recently, uh, accepted surprisingly, uh, lampas isang taon na yung pandemic, pero ngayon pa lang natatanggap yung aerosol transmission. Uh, sa akin, hangin does not quite capture it kasi hangin means air or wind sa Tagalog. No? Uh, and so the term I use when talking to my patients is nasa hininga. Okay. Uh, ano ba ang kaibahan? So lumulutang yan at uh, mas malayo ang inaabot dahil very fine, no? pinong-pinong particles sila. Uh, this was the initial statement of the World Health Organization in July 2020 about aerosol transmission. Nasa hininga ba sila? Sabi nila, well, dinidiscuss pa namin and we're still evaluating if this can happen. No? And even up to March 24 this year, meron silang sponsored study saying that they still cannot conclude airborne transmission because when they try to culture virus from the air, ibig sabihin, kukuha sila ng sample ng air, titingnan nila kung tutubo yung virus no, sa sample na yon, they have a hard time doing it consistently. No? Uh, but there's so much proof na airborne ang transmission ng COVID-19. No? I'll show you three uh, reports on this. Yung sa Skagit Valley uh, Coral, uh, in the US, uh, a choir made of 61 members. No? Andito yata yung index case, no? nasa front row daw on one side. Was able to spread it no? as far as 10 meters away. Uh, and sa, 50, sa 61 choir members na to, in one practice section, session, 53 were infected. No? So grabe na yun kung droplet. Pilansik, no? parang pinagduduroan mo na lahat ng tao to, to get 53 of 61 people infected. Uh, it's very difficult kung uh, droplet at saka napakalayo. No? Um, ito, even more interesting, is a bus in China. No? Ito yung index case na sa likod siya ng bus. Uh, and... Uh, Nagkasakit ang eight other people. Uh, nine other people. No? And two things to note here. Yung isang nahawa, nahawaan niya was 4.5 meters away. So medyo malayo. And the review of the video in the bus showed na they did not touch each other or touch any common uh, fomites doon sa loob ng bus. But this case is more even more interesting. This passenger boarded the bus 30 minutes after the index case, yung may COVID-19. 30 minutes after he left. At nahawa pa rin siya. At walang ibang makhanap na pinanggalingan ng kanyang sakit. Ibig sabihin, the virus remained suspended inside the bus even after the index case who was infected left. No? And perhaps the most convincing proof na ngayon lang na publish in March 2021, but this happened uh, mid middle of last year in an isolation apartment in Korea. Uh, an index case on the fourth floor uh, was able to transmit disease to people in the first and up to the 11th floor. No? And nagtataka sila paano nangyari yan. And they traced it to the vents. No? So yung ventilation system ng building na to was all vertical. No? So walang ibang nahawa except people who shared the vent. And it's really convincing proof that uh, there is airborne transmission. Lumulutang, uh, nananatili sa hangin, at umaabot sa mga malayong lugar. So 
maraming nagalit na mga scientists and uh, dahil sa persistence in denying airborne transmission. No? May angry article that some of you might have read by Professor Trish Brinal of the London School of Public Health saying uh, the public health community should act without further delay. No? He presented 10 evidences uh, proving na hindi lang ito sa pilansik ng laway, luha at sipon, kasama ito sa ating hininga. Finally, in April 30, medyo nag-give in na ang WHO. So they inserted this in their webpage. One line, uh, one paragraph, two sentences, the virus can spread in poorly ventilated and crowded indoor settings where people tend to spend longer periods of time. This is because aerosol remains suspended and can travel further than one meter. So parang na-accept na wala man lang news conference, no? wala man lang announcement, nadagdag lang. No? Uh, and uh, you know, it took uh, uh, a few days before people noticed that it was even there. So accepted na. Hindi lang po droplet na madaling bumagsak or pilansik ng laway, sipon o luha, kundi airborne din ang transmission o nasa hininga. Ano po ba ang kaibahan? No? How, pareho rin ba ang gagawin natin? Malaki po ang kaibahan. And in this table, uh, siguro this is the most important uh, slide I'll share with you. Ano ba ang kaibahan ng prevention of droplet sa airborne? No? Uh, so iba sa protective equipment we will use, how we uh, avoid exposure, and how what we do with particles that we could come in contact with. Sa protective equipment, kung droplet, actually respiratory hygiene is enough. Kung uubo ka into your elbow or into a handkerchief para masalo na. But in airborne transmission, kailangan meron kang high-quality mask na Shit, no? Ano ba ang high-quality mask? Well, yung N95, kasi kapit na kapit siya sa mukha. No? At saka maganda yung kanyang filter. Kaya lang napakamahal. No? Although meron ng mga mura yung KN95. No? A surgical mask will not work. Kasi yung surgical mask, uh, hindi kapit sa mukha. So butas-butas sa gilid. So N95, double masking uh, may also work. So yung surgical mask, papatungan ng cloth mask para matulak yung surgical mask against the face. Uh, so, and third is if you're going to use a cloth mask, it's a triple layer mask, uh, cloth mask. At least three layers. No? Uh, for droplet, we wear masks kung malapit lang. No? Uh, within droplet distance, so mga two meters. But in airborne transmission, we wear masks whenever we're indoors. Kasi lumulutang yan, nandyan yan, like we saw in the bus. No? Um, uh, for healthcare workers, full PPE, if there's an aerosol generating procedure, like sa mga dentist or intubation, putting a tube into the patient's throat. Uh, but here, uh, full PPE is recommended if you're a frontline healthcare worker, even if there's no aerosol generating procedure. How do we avoid particle exposure here? Physical barriers and distancing, okay na. No, ma we will avoid particle exposure. Pero hindi, it floats. It will cross those barriers and go longer distances. So we need to reduce crowding pag airborne uh, because crowding uh, encourages accumulation of the virus. And we need to reduce the time we spend indoors. Okay. Um, particle contact, uh, well, we reduce direct contact. So uh, no hugging, beso-beso, shaking of hands. Uh, and uh, here we reduce air contact by ventilating. We have to change the air. So ventilation applies to indoor settings. You need to change indoor air with outdoor air regularly. We can clean surfaces, clean our, wash our hands, wash tables, wipe tables, etc. But here, we cleaning the air is very expensive, but we can do that. 
through filters or uh, procedures to sterilize air. Uh, most important uh, to avoid particle contact is, in, is to move to open space, uh, as many activities as we can, religious ceremonies, social gatherings, uh, maybe even work, uh, some forms of work, uh, markets, restaurants, etc., and other things that can be moved to open space. So here's a, a diagram of uh, what aer aerosol transmission is like. No? So uh, through time, lumulutang kasi at kumakalat, uh, becoming more concentrated. So uh, it's not like droplet na malalaglag ka agad. So without ventilation, uh, the aerosols remain suspended in the air, becoming increasingly concentrated as time goes by. Now, there are seven factors uh, that affect aerosol or airborne transmission uh, for diseases that are airborne. Number one, number of people. So kung maraming tao, mas mabilis mag-accumulate yan at mas madaming mahawa. Mahawa. Pag maliit yung kwarto, so size of the room, ventilation, paano ba pumapasok ang fresh air, at paano lumalabas ang old air, how long do, are people there? No? Kasi pag matagal ang may sakit, mas maraming virus na kumakalat at uh, mas maraming pwedeng mahawa. Uh, what are they doing? No? Puma, na, uh, silent ba sila o nagsisigawan, nagsasalita? Uh, what kind of mask are they wearing? Uh, is it one of the three accepted kinds? At saka, are, is there distancing? Magkakalayo ba sila? No? So these are the seven factors that affect airborne transmission. Um, ito, just an illustration of how activity influences it, uh, airborne transmission. Kung quiet ang mga tao, uh, mabagal ang accumulation of... Uh, the virus after an R. If there's talking, it is 10 times faster. And if there is singing or shouting, it's 50 times faster. Kaya yung sa choir na pinakita namin no, uh, kanina, uh, 56 of the 61 choir members uh, were infected because there was singing. So yun yung activity. Some people uh, have actually made equations correlating the seven factors. Uh, and these equations have been used uh, by different investigators to create models, which I will show you. This model, which I will show, was uh, developed by Jose Luis Jimenez from the University of Colorado. Three scenarios no, on the impact of distancing and masks and ventilation on uh, coronavirus transmission in three settings, a room, a bar, and a classroom. Uh, so ito yung sa room, uh, li limang, anim na tao, ito yung may sakit, no? yung red. Uh, distancing lang ang ginawa nila. Kung distancing lang sila and they stay together for a few hours, lahat mahahawa for sure. Lima of the uh, people will be infected. If they wore masks, mababawasan lang ng isa. Apat ang magiging infected. No? Because it stays suspended and tumatagos na yan sa mask after a while and becomes concentrated. But if you have cross ventilation, you open the window as entrance and the door as exit, uh, less than one in five will get infected. So, ang laki ng role ng ventilation in this setting. Here's the second model. Uh, now, a bar with 15 people and three staff members. Distance sila, 50% occupancy. So, hindi puno yung bar. Uh, if you only use distancing, uh, 14 of the 15 will get infected. So napakarami pa din. If they wear masks, uh, mababawasan ng apat. No? Pero marami pa rin. Uh, around 10 will still get infected. But if you open, in this case, mechanical ventilation to put fresh air in, uh, then only one to two 
uh, of the 15 will get infected. So again, showing the importance of ventilation. And the last scenario is a classroom where there is physical distancing. Uh, and the index case in this uh, model using their equation uh, is the teacher. Kung infected yung teacher and there's just distancing uh, of the students in the room, 24 students, half will get infected after two hours of classes. If they wear masks, mababawasan. Only five uh, will get infected. But if they open the windows and allow cross ventilation to the doors, then only one in 24, less than one in 24, will get infected. So ventilation, especially cross ventilation, where there's a defined air entry and exit is very useful. Now, the question now is, how do we know if the ventilation is enough? Uh, and the, there are many different ways uh, to measure ventilation and decide if it's enough. One is measuring airflow in cubic meters per minute. No? Ang recommended ng ano, WHO is 10 liters per second per person uh, in a room. Uh, it's very hard to measure and I, I don't really recommend this. But for those of you who want to measure it, first you need to measure the wind speed. If there's a fan of no? may hangin, whatever, an aircon uh, in meters per second. And then you need to multiply it by the smallest opening in meters squared. How does air go out? No? So a meter squared times meters, ano na yan? meters cubed, no? cubic meters per minute. Yan ang airflow. And then you need to multiply it by 1,000 to convert cubic meters to liters para alam mo if you comply with the WHO. Tapos hindi pa yan. May constant pa. Kung one-sided ang ventilation, it's not, the air is circulating but not really going out. You're only achieving 5% of the target ventilation. But if there's cross ventilation, may entry and exit, it's 65%. So, kung masyado tong complicated, complicated talaga. I do not recommend this at all. No? Uh, people actually buy devices to measure wind speed. And some devices are already rated for flow, but it's very complicated. And and uh, yeah, that's how to measure airflow. But how do you know if it's enough, niba? Because if there are many people and small the room, it might not be enough. There are many not considered. So the other measure is air change per hour. Ilang beses nagpapalit ang hangin sa loob ng isang kwarto sa loob ng isang oras. Komplikado rin eh. Susukatin, susukatin mo yung kwarto, no? <laughs> yung volume. Length times width times height. So kunwari in this example, 80 cubic meters. Tapos yung sinukat mong airflow sa number one, kung alam mo na yan, let's say 160 cubic meters per hour, uh, you divide ano, Air change, air flow, yung 160 by room volume, 80 cubic meters. So the air in the room changes two times per hour. I also do not recommend that. Kasi kung maraming tao, ang recommended, by the way, in intensive care units where you have people with uh, coronavirus is six air exchanges per hour. So uh, two, which is uh, more than average for average homes, is very low. I do not recommend this. And, and uh, para sa mga mas madali mag -isip, this is what we recommend. Uh, and becoming more popular today, which is measuring air quality. Measuring the carbon dioxide concentration in the air in parts per million no? uh, using infrared technology. Ano bang itsura niyan? Ito, uh, I bought one of these. It's 2,000 pesos, so medyo mahal. You might want to share, and I'll show you why you can share with uh, friends and family para maka, makabili. And buildings should, uh, operators and owners should actually get these. No? Uh, in this example, 1,236 parts per million uh, ang concentration ng carbon dioxide. Why are we interested in carbon dioxide 
concentration. Kasi it's a measure of rebreathed air. How much of the air we're breathing is coming from other people. Uh, alam naman natin, when we exhale, carbon dioxide yun eh. No? You inhale, maraming oxygen. When we exhale, maraming carbon dioxide. So kung maraming carbon dioxide in the air, it means yung hinihinga mong hangin galing sa ibang tao na yun. Uh, and then it adjusts for the, alam, natandaan nyo yung seven factors na yan. Uh, it adjusts except for mass quality. Ibig sabihin, kung maraming tao, tataas yan. Kung maliit yung kwarto, kung pangit ang ventilation, kung matagal na kayo sa loob and nagkakantahan kayo, nagsisigawan at dikit-dikit kayo, tataas ang carbon dioxide. No? And these two do not adjust for these factors. No? Uh, but carbon dioxide does. So, ano ba ang target? Atmospheric carbon dioxide in the last uh, decade reached 415 parts per million. That's the lowest you can get kasi yan na yung fresh air ngayon. No? Uh, decades ago, it, we were in 300, the 300s, but now 400 na. Uh, moderate risk for airborne transmission, according to the US FDA, is more than 700 parts per million. And very high risk na if 1,000 parts per million. So some schools in the US, they actually put this uh, in the room. And they set it to, to make an alarm. Pag umabot na ng 1,000, there will be an alarm. Classes need to stop temporarily. Windows need to be open. People need to leave for a while and come back when it goes down. So something like that. Or maybe increase the ventilation uh, from the air conditioning system. It's difficult in, uh, especially in winter, mahirap yan. No? Um, so here's how I used it. Uh, this is the dining room in my house. Uh, and uh, me and my wife, my daughter, and my son-in-law. Uh, and I did experiments unknown to them. But this is how you can use carbon dioxide monitoring. Uh, with every windows closed after an hour, uh, 1,000 parts per million. So that's a danger level now. But if the windows are open, uh, it goes down to 800 parts per million. Medyo dangerous pa rin. Um, if I turn on a fan, pero, you know, it's just circulating. I face it against the wall. Hindi naman outward, no? So hindi siya cross ventilation. Uh, it goes down to 750 parts per million. If I do cross ventilation from one side, the right side to the door, uh, medyo safe na 650 parts per million. No? It's pushing indoor air out and uh, sucking the fresh air in. My lowest achieved parts per million to the windows. So pulling air from window here and from the doorway here out the windows there. Uh, and uh, with that, we got 500 parts per million. So after a few days of experimentation, this is where we decided to put our ventilation. So you don't have to do it every day. Pwede ko na yan ipasa sa kapatid ko o sa kaibigan ko. I know the different settings. I know what it's like in the room. I know where to face the fan. So it helps me. And uh, if you work somewhere, you can test your workplace. Uh, baka naman iibahin nyo lang yung direction ng fan, bababa na yung carbon dioxide. Or kung hindi nyo talaga mapababa, eh, kailangan magreklamo kayo. No? So, so here is how different monitors look like. I wouldn't buy this one. Uh, parang kita nyo, these are all consistent of 413, pero siya nasa 570 yata siya. So siya yung outlier and hindi siya infrared technology. So I later learned infrared technology is the most accurate. Best, of course, is to move outdoors. No? So some of our furniture, we've moved outdoors. Uh, kasi that's already 400 parts per million by default. So going back to this table, all the measures I've talked about so far are about what we can do as individuals. And to me, medyo unfair yan. Kasi, you know, parang nasa burden lagi ng mga tao yung what to do. Uh, 
yung mga may power, hindi natin sila nape-pressure. Eh, ito sila yung gagawa nito eh. Uh, reduce air contact, ventilate public places, clean the air, move, move uh, facilities to open space. Uh, and I'm going to show you a recent tweet by uh, Professor Benjamin Barr from uh, Liverpool uh, University. He's a professor in public health. Uh, sabi niya, too much public health research is focused on changing the behavior of the powerless. So, ayo. Rather than changing the powerful. Napakatotoo niyan. And that's why there's so much inequity uh, in our COVID response. Ang mahihirap, they live in crowded places. No? And then we cause inadvertent crowding. Our policymakers have caused a lot. Even vaccination is in inadvertent crowding. For example, by limiting public transport during the uh, height of the pandemic, you have an inadvertent result. Crowded. Crowding. So crowded na sila sa transportation. Crowded pa sila pag dicting nila sa workplace. Crowded pa sila sa bahay. And, and uh, so we are sometimes powerless to, to say, I'd like to go where there's good ventilation. And uh, uh, other policies, uh, open space is closed. Uh, UP Diliman is closed. The beaches are closed. Um, Parang mali, hindi ba? And then closed spaces are open. Uh, so you can crowd in a bus, but you can't go to a park. Uh, and these are examples of how we have not put enough pressure on those with power and those individuals uh, like ourselves who are powerless and who don't make the uh, policies yung burden of reducing transmission risk, especially airborne transmission, falls on our shoulders. Kaya naman, kaya naman natin gawin ito eh, no? to, to make sure uh, transportation is safe and that there is open space. Um, yeah, the, the ano kasi, disasters, tragedies, they shape the world. Diba? Yung skyscrapers, pati tayo, may skyscraper tayo, made of metal structures. That emerged after a fire raised Chicago to the ground in 1835 and steel structures emerged. Yung subway stations uh, or even elevated train stations, uh, they evolved after a blizzard in 1888 hit you know, the East Coast of the US and paralyzed the economy uh, and caused death and uh, hunger. Uh, so parang these disasters lead to uh, improvements in the world we live in. The 1832 UK cholera epidemic uh, led to the one of the modern, or one of the first public health interventions imposed on the powerful, development of modern sewage systems. And, and you know, Longevity increased from 30 years old to now uh, we're in the 70s and in some countries the 80s uh, just because of modern sewage and how we evolved after these infectious ano, this, uh, epidemics. So ganun din yung sa COVID. We need to evolve. No? The, and uh, how do we, second to the last slide, how do we pressure changed the behavior of the powerful. Then rather than imposing all of this on the shoulders and putting it on the shoulders of the poor uh, and the powerless. Uh, and this is really my, I have to advise on how to beat airborne transmission. At the end of the day, we have the power, the people. We need to vote, make sure we vote. And we need to make sure we vote wisely. So thank you for your attention. That's the end of my talk. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you po, Dr. Tony. And dami-dami kong natutunan. Sobra. Talaga? Um, <laughs> oh, <sobra>. so. <laughs> Ang galing-galing. Boboto ka na? Um, Boboto ka na? Ay, nako, lagi po akong boboto. Registered po talaga ako. Yes. Ano, 
At nang bubo nga nga po ako ng mga tao na hindi hindi bumoboto or hindi nang re-register. <laughs> yeah. Nagre-register. Kasi sabi ko, parang, okay. it's your right. So, hindi mo ina-exercise. Anyway, um, one of the, you know, while you were talking, um, sa beginning pa lang ng talk nyo, Dr. Tony, no? um, binasa ko rin po kasi some of the studies na ano, pinost nyo po about um, COVID nga being air, um, aerosolized na. No? Um, yung tanong ko po, uh, bakit po kaya napatagal yung paglabas ng balita tungkol dito? Um, lalo na kung it's one of, di ba, parang ang dami sana na hindi na-infect yung yeah. uh, yung di ba na preventing transmission if they were more parang vigilant or they actually they were more proactive in releasing um yeah. this no I think simple lang naman yung explanation it's a scientific explanation mm-hmm. for scientists the absolute proof is kumuha ka ng sample of air and nakita mo that the virus can grow uh, from that sample and and but it's not so hard to do So yun yung hindi inaccept na limitation. They they were growing it from the vents and the filter material. Parang gusto pa nila i-grow sa hangin mismo. That's mm-hmm. very difficult. So so now they are accepting indirect evidence. Like like the Skagit choir, what happened in Korea, what happened in the China bus, uh and and many other uh examples that convinced them. Pero indirect mm-hmm. Short of mm-hmm. actually consistently growing the virus from the air. Ang 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 tanong follow up question ko lang don Doc Tony kasi parang I would err on the side of caution, especially especially with a disease like this, de ba? That can I, I mean, na andami nang namamatay and ang ang taas taas ng transmission rate. So I was wondering kung ano yung ano don eh parang <laughs> um, bakit hindi ginagawa na lang yon, de ba? Erring on the side of caution and then later on ease up, de ba? Yes, yes. Uh... I, I can't explain. It's mas severe kasi ang ang restrictions pagka airborne. Mas severe ang precautions and I guess they were afraid na we were we would be imposing too much. Uh kaya lang I agree that has uh, delayed our uh the control of the pandemic. But moving forward, I mean science yeah. has its limits. Uh We move forward now. Acknowledge it, change policy, uh, and and get over this as soon as possible. Hopefully, nga uh, mas maraming makalam nito, no, para makahanap na ng paraan yes. um, to address this. Okay, um, isa po sa questions natin sa Q and A. Effective po ba ang paggamit ng air purifier for indoor settings? If yes, what specs should be considered? Okay. Uh, Well, so uh, if you remember the slide uh, on protective measures, no, uh, you can either change the air sa indoor to ah, or clean the air. So yung change the air yun yung ventilation, yung carbon dioxide monitor. So in areas where hindi mo talaga mapababa, kasi yun yung design ng ano, ng building, mababa ang maliliit ang bintana, no. Uh, or kuminsan walang bintana you can at least clean the air and the recommended uh, method is to the use of epa filters uh, which are you know ultra fine filtration which can filter off particles as small as one micron in diameter so yung mga yung mga airborne particles they can actually filter them no uh, so yun yung recommendation uh, Yes. Yung mga maliliit na purifier na nilalagay nyo sa leeg, hindi uubra yun. <laughs> eh kasi, alam nyo, in, Salamat in, po sa pagsagot niyan. <laughs> in, one, in one minute, 8 liters ang hinihinga natin no, na hangin. Eh, ilan yun? 100 cc lang yun eh. How will it clean 8 liters of air? In, uh, if it's so, siguro dapat ang lakas-lakas ng hangin na yon na tumutunog na yon, no? Uh, so it, it, no way that it can clean eight liters of air per minute, uh, which is what you breathe in. Okay, po. Um, as a follow-up to that, so aside from air filters with HEPA, what about the UV lamps being sold in the market? Will it help? <laughs> 
Well, so UV so, lamps. Karen lang po yan. <laughs> uh, UV lamps can sterilize for sure. Uh, that's what we use in operating rooms to sterilize operating rooms. Kaya lang, <laughs> if you're staying in that room, like that's your workplace, you can be there while the UV lamp is on. Yeah. But so yun yung problema. So yeah, I, I think uh, it, it will be very difficult. So unless siguro sa hospitals or clinics pwede yan, uh, pag may dumating na may infection or na-discharge yung patient with COVID, you want to sterilize the air. Kasi alam natin, it, the virus can stay suspended for many hours. Yeah, no? Then we can actually uh, sterilize it using UV, UV light. But I don't think it's good for you if you're going to be yung continued, continued presence. Kasi ano yan eh, magkaka sunburn ka. At saka yung it's bad for your eyes. It can, it's, it's a dangerous device if you don't know how to use it. Okay po. Um, meron po yatang um, gustong magtanong ng question live. Si um, Miss uh, Love, uh, Mar- Mas Beltran. Vince, can you... Um... Sure. Yes, actually, Miss Masal, you can speak na po. Unmute lang po, Miss Masal. Hi, Masal. Oh, I think she's disconnected. Oh, oh baka na disconnect. Uh, so, um, in the meantime, um, while we're waiting, um, meron na, meron rin pong question dito si Doc Natsi po. Um, thank you for the very informative talk, um, Doc Tony. You recommended three layers of cloth. Um, pero yung tanong niya po is kung makapal po kaya ang cloth. Um, okay po ba yun? And may way po ba to check na sakto yung protection ng mask kung makapal na cloth yung gagamitin? Uh, kasi I think it's not the thickness but rather the, you know, the pores, the, the distance between the fibers that's important. So, no, I, I have not seen any recommendation on, ano, on using thicker cloth. Uh, it's it's triple layer uh, cloth masks. Meron pang ang nagre-recommend ng you know four or five layer, but uh, uh, in in general, people think three layer is enough. So yung panyo na tinakip sa bibig or yung kerchiefs, parang hindi sila sufficient. Uh, we really need to get three layers, and then ano, uh, they can be washed and reused. So that's the advantage. Hindi sila, hindi sila masyadong mahal. May mura na rin na KN, yung KN95, ba? parang 10, 10 pesos per mask. It's more expensive for sure than the surgical mask. Um, meron po kasi ako hindi na yata nakakonect si Miss Marcel. Si Miss Loveland, tumampo. Then, nakaano na ba siya? Apo, uh, nakapromote na po siya and she should be able to talk na po. Ms. Loveland, naka-mute ka lang. So if you'd like to talk, please. Baka ano sila, Vince? Baka nawawala. <laughs> okay, sige. Baka kumakaway uh, lang. <laughs> Oo, baka nag lang pala. <laughs> Hindi nag raise ng hand, Vince. <laughs> Um, sige, itutuloy ko na lang muna dun sa mga questions. Vince, can you ano, message them na lang if, if they still want to talk? Si Dr. Ed Tadem, <laughs> ano, Dr. Oh, okay. Tony, may question. So what about the role of vaccines in reducing airborne transmission? Is there a correlation according to real-world data? Well, yeah. So people are saying that the vaccine prevents the disease from getting worse, right? But doesn't really prevent transmission. At least we haven't proven that yet. That doesn't mean it doesn't prevent transmission. Because no? if you want to show that a virus prevents transmission, iba yung study design. Uh, 
For example, we proved that in flu vaccine. We vaccinated physicians uh, and showed that the patients, uh, there was a reduced incidence of pneumonia in the patients. So parang yun ang proof of preventing transmission. Uh, but that came years and years after we were already using uh, flu vaccine. So it might not come soon, yung proof. But, but already there's indirect evidence from the real world. Kasi look at what happened in the U.S. A month, they were surging. And a month after they started vaccination, talagang a very rapid decline. The same pattern seen in the UK and in Israel and countries where there, you know, the massive vaccinators uh, showed massive declines in incidence. And for, for me personally, I am convinced that the vaccines prevent transmission. Okay, po, Doc Tony. Um, next question, po. What is the recommended PPE to be used in handling COVID patients? Is it necessary to wear coveralls or wearing gowns using N95 masks would be enough? Uh, no, if you're dealing with a COVID patient, you, you wear full PPE. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Simple answer lang po. Full PPE yes. po tayo. Full. Full tayo. Oh. Kasi high risk situation na yun. Okay. Um, balik po tayo sa UV light. Um, syempre, um, even though sinabi natin na um, dapat pinapressure natin and of course we, if we can you know find ways of preventing transmission or getting infected then of course important rin sa atin yun. So how long po dapat raw ang UV light na naka-on at how often po ang paggamit ng UV light sa isang treatment area? Well, so I, I, it's around 15 minutes. Uh, okay, 15 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, you can actually use it where when you think there are Kasi yung wiping matagal eh. No? So, kunwari yung sterilizing vehicles in between uh, use, uh, you know, uh, you, could, you could use that. It will, uh, the light, the UV light will sterilize the surfaces that uh, it reaches. No? Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, may follow-up yata doon si Delphine Ramirez. Using aerosolized sterilization, would it help? I'm not sure what this actually no, no, means. No. Baka, <laughs> yeah, so they use mga sterilizing sprays. No? Uh, ah, okay. They use that in some areas, but we think it's very dangerous. Because uh, we need to understand that uh, aerosol is dynamic that we don't breathe once with a virus and the rest of your breaths are, are virus-free. So it's continuing. And when you sterilize, parang you sterilize the air for those few breaths <laughs> during mm -hmm. which the, the spray lasts and, and stays suspended. And when it goes down, and when you go somewhere else, hindi naman aalis yung virus. It's still in your lungs and throat and nose so and then there are dangers no so we we know of people who went into anaphylactic shock or like spasm uh, bronchioles uh, because of the of the sprays so it's it's dangerous and uh, we don't think it's very effective Kasama na po ba dito, Doc, yung Lysol, yung mga ganun? Ito po yeah, ba yung, yeah, yes. uh, yung mga sprays yes. na ganun? Okay. Gusto nyo gamitin sa surfaces, okay lang. But if you're gonna use it to sterilize the air, uh, parang I, it's not useful. Mm -mm. So best for surfaces, pero kung hangin yung gusto nyo i-sterilize, wag na lang po tayo gumamit ng mga aerosol sprays. Uh, yeah, um, the HEPA filter... And ventilate, air change. No? Okay. We bring, alam mo, I bring my uh, monitor to restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, may electric fan ako. So hanap ako, I don't go to restaurants a lot, maybe once a month, you know. But uh, when I go, I check the, if I can stay outside. If I can't stay outside, I don't go. And mm -hmm. then outside, I check, kasi kung minsan, kung maraming tao, I check the carbon dioxide. And if it's high, May dala akong maliit na electric fan. 
yung debate yung ano rechargeable uh, and i ask permission if i can use it so you know all these small precautions add up and okay. and help okay nako ang dami na po biglang mga nagpapasukan ng mga tanong um so how about um sterilizing um boxes used by some government or offices um are they advisable which if you need to handle them for mites which are you know materials handled by other people or held by other people you need to handle them right away you know wiping uh, might help spraying uh but but kami dati, what what we do now in the household is kung mayroong grocery you know we just leave it for 24 hours uh before actually you know getting them if we need to use something right away inugasan inugasan namin but but otherwise just leave it alone the the virus uh cannot last very long uh we, we, if it does not reach a uh, human host so leave it alone for a day it should be okay ah okay naalala ko po kasi doc tony nung mga simula na ano yung mga studies na lumalabas no in the beginning of 2020 yeah. parang sinasabi na it, the virus can actually actually last for weeks but on particular surfaces like is it was it plastic yeah. or metal yeah. i forget yeah. so yeah. ano yeah. po yung bagong labas na po doon so that's not its major mode of transmission mm-hmm. and uh that's, a, that's an exception rather than the rule. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, ah, so, so hindi now, po talaga yun. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so, sabi nga nila, if we spent on ventilation, what we're spending on sterilization right now, we would be in a better place. Because we're spending so much on sterilizing, di ba? That's right. Uh, oh. Yeah. Which is really quite expensive as well in the long run. That we are not and, spending on ventilation. Uh, and when you think about it, harmful rin sa environment, all those plastics yeah, and ano yeah, na, yeah. Mm-hmm. iba na ginagamit. Uh-oh. So, ano, parang the message should be more on ventilation rather than sterilization na nga. Yes. Ngayon, no? yes. Uh-oh. Okay. Um, meron dito about face-to-face classes. Um, Dr. Tony, <laughs> Um, ano ka yeah. so, sige, when, a, when face-to-face classes will be allowed, will CO2 monitors be a good requirement to prevent spread of infection in campuses? Oh, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. so when people, more people are ventilate, uh, vaccinated and uh, we're able to resume face-to-face meetings, we need to redesign the world we live in. And that includes, you know, improving ventilation in classrooms and ways that we can identify uh, when uh, ventilation is being overwhelmed by the number of people or the duration of the activity. Alam mo, Marby, let me say this. The saddest thing, the worst thing that can happen to us is if we emerge from this pandemic exactly the same way we went into it. Pareho pa rin ng mundo. Pareho pa rin ng ating transportation. Pareho pa rin ng workplace. Uh, parang hindi nag-iba, no? Ang mm-hmm. lahat ng kainan indoors pa rin, and we did not move activities outdoors when we can, that would be so sad because it will mm-hmm. prolong this pandemic and it will predispose our children and our children's children to another airborne pandemic. I would mm-hmm. not wish, wish this on, on our, your worst enemy. I mean, this is something we need to prevent. The way air waterborne uh, infections was prevented by modern sewage systems. Uh, we need to do something like that. So that kasi alam na ng mga virus pag waterborne sila may panlaban na tayo eh. So they're mm-hmm. now moving to the air. Uh, and and we need to do something about that. Change oh, the they mutate and, and yeah, they mutate and evolve. <laughs> diba yun naman uh-huh. yung ano eh. <laughs> yeah. Pero very important po yan message na yan, Dr. Tony, I think. Lalo na kasi nga parang everyone's treating this like a temporary glitch, di ba? Na yes, yes. Na ano, balik sa uh, siya, we, right? we keep saying it's not just close or open the economy. <laughs> kasi when we close, bababa yan, sigurado. Lockdowns work. 
When we open, tataas yan. Kasi we're doing the same thing. It's not close or open. It's how we open. No? We, we need to open open space and close closed space, not the other way around. Our policymakers you know, are closing the safe places to go to and making the economy suffer unduly. So, yeah. so yeah, vote wisely. Vote wisely talaga. At saka po, less spaces na rin, like most of the parks are being, di ba, raised over yeah. for, para to build, yun nga, parang mga, ano, other yeah. buildings, no? Kaya, na, nalilimit rin tayo in that sense. So, Ay. you know, I, I echo that, eh, no? parang Ina-arrest yung mga nagtitinda, mga vendors on the sidewalks. Eh, yun nga yung tama, eh. We should bring mm-hmm. markets out uh, and to the streets so people can shop from their cars and dine on the streets. Alam nyo, yung, wala tayong open space eh, kaya yung pasyala natin, mga mall, department store. Eh, in many countries, uh, you know, you close the street and turn it into open space. So yung kainan nandun na sa kalye. Uh, and, and that's going to make the world a better place to live in and going it's going to prevent uh, the recurrence of future airborne pandemics mm-hmm. okay po um next question good afternoon po is there from an anonymous attendee is there any evidence that the virus spread um spreads more quickly i guess in places with cold temperatures like malls uh yung your example niya thank you po yeah well, so parang they expected a, a surge during the cold months last year. Parang hindi naman. It didn't work that way. So parang right now, no proof about weather being a major determinant of ano, uh, infection rate. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, isa pa pong question. Um, kung may mga indoor plants, makakatulong po ba to? Lalo na po ngayong pandemic, ang dami ng mga plantita at plantita na nag-emerge. Uh, I, I can't imagine why. Uh, indoor plants are good, you know, plants are good for the environment. Uh, it will produce oxygen. Uh, what we want to do is get rid of the carbon dioxide. So it's a carbon dioxide, actually. Yeah, the, the plants will absorb the carbon dioxide, but not fast enough. Uh, yung when we produce them, mabilis kasi yan eh. Eight mm-hmm. liters per minute ang inihinga natin. So after an hour, mga 500 liters of ano na yan, carbon dioxide-rich air. So the plants cannot take that fast enough. Okay. So, okay yung may plants, pero hindi siya sufficient pa rin, no? For COVID, uh, Next yeah. question, uh, uh, for COVID. So, how long can we use our KN95? Kasi nga, na-mention nyo, mahal yung masks na KN95, no? Mm-hmm. Um, even, even yung cheaper masks, actually, if you're one na laging, na your job requires you to be in front of people, of course, the cost, kung hindi shouldered ng, ng company or ano, can, can pile up, no? So how long can you use the masks? Ano, um, any recommendations? So in the, in the hospitals, I think they change twice per shift. So siguro mga four hours. Pero ano, um, if you Google it, there are safe ways to, to, to dry and reuse an N95, you know, extend its use. Uh, so you can, you can look that up. May mga UV boxes rin yata na binibend, though they're expensive as well. Yeah. Na for sterilization ng masks, no? Yeah. Tumakas ang presyo, buy, syempre, kasi You could buy thousands of masks. Oh. <laughs> Mahal-mahal <laughs> yung UV boxes. Huh? Okay. More questions. Uh, is it necessary to wear face shield pa po ba? Naku, napaka-controversial nito face shield na to. Well, or face yeah, mask alone is it, okay it's, po. It's still required by the IATF, no? Uh, so people are saying na there's absolutely no evidence on face shields. Meron naman uh, other airborne diseases uh, have been, uh, studies have shown that wearing face shields can reduce transmission. Pero uh, having said that, yung evidence is uh, indirect. Kasi hindi naman for COVID itself, uh, wala naman. But we have indirect evidence. So yung recommendations ng unified guidelines is 
suggestion lang no it's an added protection hindi siya required no yung policy to require it uh, yun yung mga eh, pwede nating pagtalunan na papagalitan mo ba o aarestuhin mo ba ang taong walang shield uh, we can we can debate that but i i would the no kasi policy makers need to decide one way or the other so after debating it and the policy makers decide i would just i would just follow it and uh kasi talaga namang some will and some won't go for that policy and and we we can fight about this you know mm-hmm. parang ang kaaway natin yung virus hindi yung isa't isa so let's just be patient uh, about it uh, mm-hmm. pag-usapan natin yung talagang things that matter uh ventilation and and emerging from this pandemic a better a better world than when we came in okay um i think eto na po yata yung last question ay, hindi pa pala. May mga lumaras. Sabihin nyo lang, doc, ano, Dr. Um, hindi kung ano na tayo. Okay. We'll have, the, we'll have uh, maybe the last three questions kung may pumasok pa. Um, ito yung okay. first of those three. So, dumating, di ba po dati dumating tayo sa point na naubusan ng masks like ang hirap makabili ng mask. Ah, connected po to dun sa how do you reuse or how can you ano um, prolong the life of masks, no? So, Uh, maybe as a follow as a as further info lang kasi na pag-usapan na natin yung sa UV light yung pagbilad raw po sa araw is this effective pero yeah. ang context niya ay ginamit yun while nag-handle ka po ng covid confirmed patients so oh yun yung gosh. context i think ano eh many people are worried about mass disposal kasi mm-hmm. as we believe that they can filter the virus from the air We should also believe that the vir- that the masks can contain the virus. No? Uh, so how we handle them? No, pag tanggal mo dapat hindi mo nagagalaw yung labas kasi yung mga viral particles uh, nandoon. Uh, <laughs> and and then reusing them uh, poses several dangers kasi nagde-degrade yung material, right? So uh, I have seen recycle strategies for ano for uh, N95 pero yung surgical masks yata mas mahirap it's thinner and more fragile uh, yeah so so yeah you we you can we can try for N95 and you can wash the cloth masks diba and yung double mm-hmm. masking you can throw away disposable kasi yung design ng surgical mask eh. So I would dispose them uh, rather than try to reuse them. No? Okay. Uh, just be aware that there's danger in reuse because the uh, the virus, the viral particles are collected in the mask, and that the materials degrade when we reuse them. Okay, po. I'm um, siguro, um, Doc Tony. This is something na ano naman. Uh, connected sort of kasi po mask disposal no something lang to remind everyone i guess be responsible as well when you're disposing your masks kasi po yun yung request ng mga garbage um na nagko-collecta po ng garbage kasi po ang lakas rin ng um instances po na pwede silang mahawa de ba dito sa ano sa mga masks na dinidispose natin um ay nawala yata si Dr. Tony. Dr. Yeah, Tony can meet po kayo. Uh, yeah, I, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. Okay. Sige po. Um ito, uh, this question, um what is the best advice to do for employees who are not consistently wearing face face masks in the workplace? I think this can be related then um to siguro um parang issues of uh, information dissemination and how to make the public kind of um realize uh doc tony paano, paano nila mas ma yun, matitake yung health nila into their hands i know you said na parang we should um force policy makers pressure policy makers and employ and employers pero for those na employees or those people na hindi naniniwala sa masks or are not actually um using them properly paano kaya ma maano yung information na to in such a way that they can be um parang enjoined 
to to wear them properly and to ensure na uh, they don't transmit in case they get covid no um can can you hear me marby yes yes i'm, I'm having internet problems so nawawala yung nga po. but Apo. but anyway sa akin kasi so dalawa ang choice mo kalabanin mo o kausapin mo di ba uh, i i think na parang uh, punitive measures parang hindi ako masyadong ano diyan eh sang ayon may nung isang araw may naglalakad ako sa daan may nakita akong dalawang basurero na pinapagalitan ng ano ng police dahil ano uh, hindi nagsuot ng mask habang nag nagpapahinga para sa akin parang ang ang lupit naman noon pero magsiksikan sa mall pwede magsiksikan sa bus pwede ito basurero in open air sila pa yung pinapagalitan uh, para sa akin hindi dapat takutan hindi takot ang gamitin natin ang gamitin natin talu- talino ng ating kapwa tao i believe filipinos are very intelligent uh, eh how many times but do we hear uh, policy makers and our leaders explaining to the people no na alam nyo nakakatakot ang virus na to kasi mild karamihan kaya maintindihan nila yon tatanong bakit mild tapos ang karamihan tapos kaya ka natatakot kasi po yung mild sila po yung naglalakad sa paligid sila po yung walang nararamdaman at sila yung nagkakalit ng kakalat ng sakit no at Sooner or later, aabot yan sa isang matanda o sa isang may sakit at yan ang ikamamatay nila. At maaring magulang mo yan o kasama mo sa bahay. Kung lahat malala, ang ganda, madali yon Kasi alam mo na kaagad kung sino ang may sakit o confine mo na sila, wala nang mahahawa. So we need leaders who can explain to the people so that they will comply. So instead of intimidating everyone, uh, into complying with protective measures we need to educate and empower the public and even more than that we need to educate the people with power the building owners the employers the establishment uh, the business establishments they need to be educated so that uh, people are empowered to follow precautionary measures Important po yung education ng ano no yung mga building owners as you said etong mga employers kasi sila rin yung mag-implement nito eh no so without a clear direction and without clear guidelines mahihirapan talaga sila no Yeah yes mm. exactly Okay um si Miss Lisa Liza Lisa Ricarte nag-grace po ng hand Sige po Miss Ricarte pa-unmute na lang po ng sarili Hindi ko alam kung nag-high lang sila. <laughs> Or, raise the roof kay Doc Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Parang nawawala sila. Sige, um, one last question na lang, Doc Tony. Alam kong nakakapagod po sumagot na rin dito. Oh, yeah. Pero siguro po kung ano, okay. in the future sana po meron po tayo ulit nito pagkaroon pagkar- ulit ng updates on COVID. No? Ang dami-dami pong mga tanong ng mga tao. So, um, ang last question po, um, nako, Meron po akong mga kakilala na uminom ng ivermectin as prevention daw po for COVID dahil may mga nababasa na daw po sila na effective ito. Um, totoo po ba ito? And last follow-up after this, no, in wearing full PPE, how long should we stay inside the patient's room? Para sa, sa mga health workers po kasi ito, um, with COVID-confirmed patients who's on high flow machine. So yung ano po muna, sagot sa ivermectin po siguro muna. Okay, well, so alam nyo, uh, Pagka yung evidence tungkol sa ivermectin, talagang merong accumulating evidence. No? Uh, kaya lang, very low quality pa yung evidence. Maliliit na trial, at saka uh, hindi pa maganda ang design. So maraming ongoing trials. The last time I looked, there were something like 70 ongoing trials. When, when a trial is ongoing, Yan ang pinakamalaking proof na hindi pa sigurado. Kasi 70 
institutions around the world found funds, got people to work on this, excited sila lahat that ivermectin might work. Kaya, kaya nila ginagawa yung trial. Di ba? That's the biggest proof na hindi pa sufficient ang evidence. Kasi kung sufficient na yung evidence, hihinto na lahat ng trials na ito. They will be stopped by their ethics committees. The investigators will say, okay, tama na, we don't need to finish it. Enough na yung proof. No? So hindi pa siya 100% sure. In fact, very uncertain pa. Kasi uh, ang liliit po ng mga studies eh. Uh, so we should wait for the ongoing trials to find out. And ako, sabi nila, uminom ka na. Uh, baka sakaling umubra. Eh, ang dami pa kong pwedeng ibang inumin. Uh, there are about one, 100 uh, uh, treatments for COVID-19 that are being tested. So kung iinumin mo lahat yon dahil baka sakaling ano, umubra, eh, hindi ka nakakain, di ba? Busog na busog ka na sa, <laughs> sa gamot. Uh, so, sa so yun yung status, ayaw, ayaw namin, ayaw naman namin kalabanin yung mga nagsasabing gamitin na natin. Uh, medyo nag-agree na kami sa isa't isa na, sige, ilang buwan na lang naman, antayin na natin yung results. Kahit nga ang Philippine General Hospital, gumawa na rin ng isang trial to find out. And we will find out soon enough. Uh, Sabi nila, only hope daw yun eh. Hindi, eh, eh, paano kung lumabas false hope po? No? Uh, and then false reassurance that they are protected. Di ba? Uh, so in medicine, we don't like to recommend treatment unless we are, we have a certain level of certainty na medyo sigurado na ito hindi hindi pa po I think there's a consensus in majority of the scientific community na konti na lang maghintay na tayo pagka umubra yan palakpakan tayo kapit bisig tayo gamitin natin sa lahat ng tao pero habang hindi pa wag naman natin erase yung hope ng mga tao for something that might not be true hindi po ganun ang medicine eh ah uh, Let's not raise false hope. Doc, connected dyan. Di ba anti-parasitic? Kasi po may dogs ako na. May dog po ako na. Ah, yes, yes. It's a, it's a, better, so, it's a repurposed drug. Anti-parasitic po siya. Oo. Oo. Uh, so, pati antiviral din siya? Well, they, they're thinking maybe it has an antiviral effect. And, and so, ganun naman eh. Every time you suspect something might be working, you do a trial on it. Uh, okay. So, in fairness, let's do a trial on it. And let's, the same way we should not accept everything na hindi pa sure, we should not reject treatments uh, unless we're sure that they're uh, of no use. And that's what trials will do. They will either convince us that it works or convince us that it doesn't. Okay. Okay. And yeah. super last question. In wearing full PPE, how long should we stay inside the patient's room, COVID-confirmed patients who are on high-flow machines? Uh, as short as possible. <laughs> it depends. Because <laughs> healthcare workers don't need to stay in rooms. Naman eh. They come to draw blood, to bring food, to take the temperature, or maybe take the vital signs. So it's as quick as possible is, is the best. You should not linger and, uh, and chat. Uh, and rest in a patient in the room of a patient with COVID. Yeah. Okay. So a short time as possible while doing what you're supposed to do. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Is the answer, no? Yes. Wag na tayong chubi ka pa don. Yung equation: the longer you stay, the higher the risk. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Shorten your exposure is one of the major strategies for uh, reducing transmission. Okay, Dr. Tony, yun na lang po siguro yung mga questions um, for yeah. today. Um, siguro po, I'm, I was supposed to uh, do the closing remarks, pero instead of closing remarks, siguro po tanimi, mas importante na tanimin ko po kayo, ano po yung 
pinaka-importante na gusto nyong reminders or ma, ma, siguro, I guess, ma-express about um, the latest updates on COVID-19 as well as prevention of transmission. Let's And let's end this, the, this ano, talk with that, no? Well, I, I would invite Filipinos to do two things. Number one is to understand airborne transmission. Na hindi yan pilansik, na babagsak after one to two meters, no? sa sahig o sa lamesa. Uh, hindi lang, meron din ganun. No? Uh, in, hindi naman airborne or uh, droplet. They can be both happening and we think it's both. So intindihin natin na lumulutang siya, na iipon siya, parang usok. At kung may usok sa isang kwarto, ano bang ginagawa natin? Di ba? Bubuksan mong bintana, bubuksan mong pintuan, baka magbukas ka ng fan para lumabas, no? Or lalabas ka sa kwarto, uh, go to somewhere na walang usok, like ano, open space. Uh, so ganun din yung virus. And, and, and yung mga ginagamit nating equipment we, to protect ourselves, we need to use them properly. So yung ating uh, mask should be should fit well. Uh, and kung cloth, dapat triple layer. Uh, kung surgical mask, dapat may nakapatong na cloth. Uh, if you can afford an N95, wear an N95. Uh, and we should avoid crowded places no? and staying long. So yun yung tayo. The second thing I would ask people to do is to apply pressure on our policy makers to rebuild this world that we live in. Now, uh, we are being forced to travel in crowded vehicles and streets and gal- maraming inadvertent crowding. No? Uh, kung naglagay ka ng checkpoint, oh, edi crowding na. Di ba? Instead of preventing, you are promoting. We need to pressure our policy makers na ayusin naman natin na uh, yung mundong ito. Let's enforce workplace safety. Meron na pong guidelines na maganda, joint administrative order on uh, workplace safety. Hindi lang ho na monitor at na uh, implement uh, We need to make it happen to protect the people who don't have a choice. Diba? So, Siguro wala tayong masyadong magagawa sa pamamahay. Pero yung transport at yung workplace, ayusin naman natin. Uh, bike lanes, active transport lanes. Alam mo, siguro that's the one silver lining in this pandemic. 400 to 500 kilometers of bike lanes have been built in the past year. Still, in the jungle of Metro Manila, that's very small. Hindi mo halos ma- mapansin. But we need to build more para people have a choice uh, on how to get to work. No? Dati, biking was good for your heart and your arteries and your cholesterol and blood sugar and blood pressure. Now it's also good for avoiding uh, airborne infection. So we need to improve access uh, to, to such modes of transportation that, that will protect the people. So. In short, meron tayong obligation to protect ourselves and protect the people around. Pero meron din tayong obligation to pressure our leaders to change the world we live in para hindi na po ito maulit ulit sa ating mga anak at mga apo. And babalikon ko lang po yung sinabi niyo rin, Dr. Tony, no? na vote and vote wisely. Yes. Diba? Let's listen to what people have to say about the pan- pandemic. No? Kasi this will probably live on, go on through election day. Let's, let's listen to how they're going to change our world. We cannot do it uh, you know, alone. They need to do it and lead us into that better world. So let's choose the leaders who have that vision uh, to change the way we live. 
Okay, napaka-importante po nung huli niyong sinabi, Dr. Tony, no? Lalo na at alam natin ang napipinto na election na para Election na. na. Oo. Okay, so maraming salamat po, Dr. Tony, for um, sharing your knowledge with us and sharing your insights as well when it comes to public health and um, good governance, no? Um, so maraming maraming salamat rin po sa lahat ng dumalo ngayong hapon. Sana po marami po kayong natutunan, mga nasagot na questions. Um, kung meron po kayong mga katanungan pa po, pwede po yung um, ipag nyo either sa YouTube or sa Facebook, UP um, CWGS, para po um, kung kaya po ni Doc Tony at busy-busy siya, eh baka matugunan rin po niya. Okay. okay. Um, Doc Tony, ano lang po, um, photo raw po um, with um, Doc Nat si Ren. Um, so, salamat po sa lahat ng dumalo um, this afternoon. Tapos na po yung ating programa. Thank you, everyone. Uh, can you Vince, hear let us part? know. Yes, 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 Dr. Tony. Yes, um, Ma'am Natsi. Hi, Ma'am Natsi. Dr. Tony, is it possible to open your window? <laughs> Naglolo ko yung ano ni Dr. Tony. Oh, kanina, okay. you know? Tingnan natin kung kaya yung video. Yeah, that looks... Uh, okay na kayo, Dr. Tony? Well, that's all I have right now. Sandali, ah. Kasi... At, apa. Para po sa mga participants natin, kung meron pong mga hindi nakadalo tapos gusto nyo pong paalam yung mga diniscuss ngayon, um, pwede nyo pong i-access yung YouTube video po nito dun sa um, website ng UP Center for, uh, sa, sa channel, YouTube channel ng UP Center for Women's and Gender Studies. Ayaw Para po mas madisemin. Ayaw camera eh. I don't know why. <laughs> It's okay. Uh, I can leave and come back in. Gusto nyo ba? I'll try. Sige, sige nga, doktor. Pwede naman po. Antayin po namin kayo. Ang dami nagpapasalamat na participants. Maraming salamat rin po. And please Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. I can't even leave. <laughs> Sana, <laughs> ay, ano ba yan? Pag ni-remove ko kasi kay Doc Tony, baka hindi na kayo maka makabalik. Baka yeah, isabay. ganun nga eh. It will be, ano. Okay. Vince, be... baka pwedeng ganto na lang or we can... Ayan, ayan na si Doc Tony. Yay! Okay, so yan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You actually see me? Yes, yes. yes. It's working. Okay, really? Now. I don't even see myself. <laughs> Smile na lang kayo, Doc Tony. Smile. Okay. 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 Lang. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Okay, so let's smile for lahat. One, two, three, smile. Thank you. So thank you so Wala. much, Dr. Tony. Wala na yung magandang camera ko. Nag <laughs> na. so, give up muna. Ayaw, ayaw mag-connect. Um, I have a worry, Marby. Are we still live? Hindi na. Yes, we are. We are, Papa. Baka ah, pwede okay. tinggalin na Vince yung ano, 